Welcome into Celtics Today. I am Will Scott, and the big week is finally here. It is NBA Draft Week. We're three days away from the 2022 NBA Draft. The Celtics will have a pick late in the second round. And on today's show, we're going to be breaking down some of the guys that Brad Stevens and this front office may be looking at. But first, go ahead and give us a like on this video. We're having a contest here at Chat Sports this month. Which channel can get the most likes? And right now, we're in last place. We have some catching up to do. So go down and hit that big thumbs up icon. So the Celtics have one pick. It is the 53rd overall selection, the sixth to last pick in Thursday night's draft. And yeah, I think a lot of us are looking at that pick and saying, ah, you know, it's the 53rd overall pick. It's very late in the draft. However, when you look at some of these mock drafts that have been coming out, there are plenty of big names that should still be on the board at 53. A lot of talent to choose from. One of those guys is Musa Diabate, a big man out of Michigan who had a pretty productive freshman season for that Sweet 16 team in Ann Arbor. He has been mocked to the Celtics in several mock drafts, including the most recent ones from Bleacher Report and Sports Illustrated. So a lot of people thinking that Diabate could be the pick for the Seas on Thursday night. Here is what he did at Michigan in his freshman season. You're talking about a 6'11 freshman from France who can get down the floor really quick, put up nine points per game, six rebounds per game, shot 54% from the floor, and I really like Diabate. And when I was talking the other day about my perfect offseason plan for the Celtics, I mentioned in one of my five steps was adding depth down low, right? Even if you bring Al Horford back, it's important to have a little bit more depth down there. Diabate, I think, would fit really well into this Celtics team. He can get it done on both ends as well. He still has to develop, I think, a little bit more as a rim protector. But if you look at this guy on tape, he's extremely quick, very explosive, and can throw it down. I really like Diabate. I would be thrilled if the Celtics took him. And with the offseason here, we're going to be breaking down all Celtics news, all Celtics rumors. It's going to be a big offseason for the Seas. They're trying to be right back in the NBA Finals next year. And with me being the new permanent host here at Celtics Today, that means you're going to get a lot more content. So stay in the loop with all Celtics offseason news. Go down, hit that big red sub button right now. Talking about our next draft prospect, that is Jabari Walker, a guy uh, that played forward last year at Colorado and had a really good season. And he did the right thing coming back for his sophomore season because he really broke out. 14.6 points per game, 9.5 rebounds per game, shot 46% from the floor. And when you look at this guy, you can see that he's a very polished shooter. He can get it done shooting the basketball from outside. And that was one of the other things I mentioned the other day in my first video with Celtics today is the Celtics need more shooters. It's very important this offseason in free agency or a trade or even the draft to go add some shooters. Jabari Walker could be that guy for Brad Stevens and company. Now pick one of these guys to draft because I have seen both of these players linked to the Celtics a lot at 53 overall. Do you want Diabate or do you want Walker? Type MD for Musi Diabate out of Michigan or type JW for Jabari Walker, a Colorado Ford that's very good shooting the ball. Another guy that's pretty good shooting, shooting the ball is Colin Gillespie. And, you know, I don't think he's going to get drafted on Thursday night, but believe it or not, in the latest Yahoo Sports mock draft, they had Gillespie, the Villanova legend, going to the, Bal the Boston Celtics. Would that be something? A fifth-year senior at Villanova had a fantastic career there, came back for his fifth year, took advantage of that COVID year, and brought the Wildcats back to the Final Four. So, as I mentioned, mock to the Celtics in my latest ya in the latest Yahoo Sports mock draft. Here's what he did this past season for Jay Wright and Nova. Nearly 16 points per game, nearly 6 rebounds per game, 3 and a half assists per game. He was absolutely outstanding his entire career. 
And when you're talking about this guy, you're talking about a leader. You're talking about someone who could come right into the NBA next year, and you would not be able to tell that he is a rookie. Now, in terms of his ball handling skills, his shooting ability, pretty similar to Peyton Pritchard. It's going to be interesting to see what the Celtics do at 53. Gillespie would be a great pick. He'd also be a pretty good undrafted free agent signing. Do you want the C's to draft Colin Gillespie? Type D for draft or type P for pass down in the comment section. I think there may be some better options on the board for the C's at 53, including Diabate. So I'm going to type my P for pass, but I would love to get this guy on the Celtics Summer League team. Talking about someone else that played in the, uh, well, used to play in the Big East Rutgers, now they're in the Big Ten, is Ron Harper Jr. from Rutgers, who, much like Gillespie, had a very, very good collegiate career. And, you know, a lot of these guys that are going to be on the board late in the second round are seniors, right, that aren't going to get drafted earlier because of their age, but maybe some of the best players in this draft. Look at when Ron, look at what Ron Harper Jr. did last season at Rutgers, really helped turn around that Scarlet Knights program, nearly 16 points per game, six rebounds per game. He's a baller. And if you watch this guy at Rutgers, you know how clutch this guy was his entire career. If you were late in the game at Rutgers, Ron Harper Jr. was shooting the rock. He's one of the most clutch players that I've seen the last couple years in college basketball and someone who very well could be on the board at 53 overall for the Seas. Really like his ability as a shooter, and I think he's very athletic too. Could fit very well into what the Celtics are looking to do. Talking about my fifth draft target, that is Hugo Basson. Not Besson, Basson, because he's from France. He was born in France, played last season in Australia's MBL League, put up nearly 14 points per game for the New Zealand Breakers. This is an interesting prospect because he's a solid scorer. He can shoot, but he's not super athletic. This is the textbook definition of of a sharpshooter. He's going to be on the wings. He's not going to go inside, but you're going to be able to give this guy the ball, catch and shoot, and he is going to convert. He's a very talented shooter, probably one of the better shooters that's going to be taken in the second round. His chances of getting drafted very high. I'm not sure if he's going to be on the board at 53, but it would make a lot of sense for the Celtics to draft him if he is. Now, who do you want the Celtics to draft? Doesn't have to be someone we're talking about on today's show. Go down in the comment section. Let me know. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So when that break comes, go down. Let me know who you want the C's to draft. Talking about our next player here, that is Jalen Williams, who had a very good career at Arkansas. It was a lot of fun to watch. He is a great two-way player. 11 points per game, 10 rebounds per game. Last season for Eric Musselman and the Hogs was a part of that really good Arkansas team. And he was the heart and the soul of that team. And after the season, it didn't look like we we're going to be talking about this guy as a draft prospect, but his stock has really gone up significantly in the last couple weeks. He's someone who should get drafted on Thursday night and could make some sense if the C's are looking to add some depth down low. Jalen Williams could be a really good fit. Now, if you watched our NFL draft coverage here at Chat Sports, you know how much better that was than the networks. We're not going to be going to commercial break on Thursday night. We're not going to be showing Burger King commercials when the future MVP is announced. So be sure to watch the NBA draft live at Chat Sports, youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV. That's the sub link right there. It's going to be in the comments and in the description of this video. Celtics are on the board at 53rd overall. ESPN will be in commercial break. We'll be showing it to you live here on Chat Sports. J.D. Davidson, another draft prospect out of the SEC that we're talking about here on today's show. Point guard from Alabama. Here's what he did last season. So the numbers aren't really like awesome, but they're really solid. Eight and a half points per game. Four and a half rebounds per game, four and a half assists per game. This was a very versatile player that was outstanding last season for Alabama in the SEC. Shot 46% from the floor. Celtics may be looking to add some depth at the point guard position. Davison might make some sense uh, going out and getting him. It's going to be interesting to see if he's still on the board at 53. A lot of these SEC guys, I think, 
like Williams and Davison, could be second-round picks. Alondez Williams, I got a chance to watch this guy a decent amount in the ACC last season. He was the ACC Player of the Year. In fact, I think he is one of the more underrated draft prospects. When you're talking about these ACC guys, you're thinking Duke, you're thinking UNC. But Alondez Williams was the best player in that conference last season. It's a crime that his team was not invited to the NCAA tournament. It's a shame because he really put together a great season, helped turn that program around 18 and a half points per game. He's a projected second round pick, probably going to go middle of the second round. If the C's want to get him, he's got to fall a little bit. Now, Dominic Barlow is one of the more intriguing draft prospects because we don't know a whole lot about him. We don't know a whole lot about the team that he played for last year. He played for overtime elite. Now, he was a terrific high school player in New Jersey. So NewJersey.com put out this profile on him saying this about his decision to play for overtime elite. Last September, Barlow shocked a lot of people when he signed a six-figure deal with overtime elite in Atlanta instead of attending a prep school in Maine. The new league, financially backed by Jeff Bezos, Drake, Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony, among others, gives 16- to 19-year-olds an alternative to college in order to train for the NBA draft. So here is Dominic Barlow, an 18-year-old that could very well get drafted on Thursday night, middle to late second round. This is a project pick, right? If the Celtics took this guy, it would be a project. But I'll tell you what, the C's have one of the last picks in the second round. Project picks are okay there. Maybe not early in the first round, late in the second round. I'm okay with picking a guy like Dominic Barlow. I'm also okay with picking Kai Soto. Hashtag Kai to Boston. Let's make it happen. You know what? The Celtics need depth down low, and they need it badly. You have an opportunity here to take an international superstar in Kai Soto. Here is his story. He is trying to be the first ever Filipino-born draft pick, trying to make history on Thursday night. He came to the U.S. to attend the Skill Factory, played high school ball in the United States, was a four-star recruit. Then he joined the G League Ignite for a very short time. But he wanted to go play in the NBL. That was his goal. So he played for the Filipino national team and also for the 36ers in the NBL. Here's a scouting profile uh, brought to you by my guy Chase Sr., a NBA host here at Chat Sports. So he's 7'2". I mean, the guy is freakishly tall, uh, can stand on his tippy toes and dunk practically. Like I said, played for the 36ers. He's 20 years old, needs to improve his footwork. But when you watch this guy on tape, the tape is very impressive. He can throw it down and get down the floor pretty quick. Here's what his skill factory coach, Jeremiah Boswell, said about him. With that size and length, his ability to play the game with his mind, see the floor, pass the ball, shoot the ball, he can really do everything. So he's unique in that. There are things he can always improve on. In the NBA, there's a lot of small ball, switching on pick and rolls. So how does he move laterally? Can he switch up on guards? How does he play pick and roll? Can he hedge and get back? Here's what he did for the 36ers in the NBL last season. 23 games played, 7.5 points per game, 4.5 rebounds per game, nearly a block per game. This guy is a threat to shoot the three ball, 38.5% from beyond the arc. Do you want to draft Kai Soto? If so, spam Kai in the chat. I know we have a lot of people from the Philippines probably watching this video. Show your love for your guy Kai Soto. Spam Kai in the chat. It would be something if he's the 53rd overall pick to the C's on Thursday night.